The main enterprise here is superfine wool. We shear about 24,000 sheep a year and lamb down around 10,000 ewes. So a third of those are mated to a white Suffolk and the lambs are turned off at 13 weeks from that program, which works well in terms of the sort of seasonal supply of feed. We can take those off at the end of spring and uh, reduce the stocking rate through the summer. Family came here in 1823. They were farming in North Yorkshire and uh, they saw an opportunity and came out to, to the Midlands of Tasmania and took up two grants of 500 acres. I think I'm sixth generation. We've been farming here for 202 years. So we're in the Midlands of Tasmania and it might surprise people, but it's a, it's a pretty dry environment here. We're sort of a 425, 450 mil annual rainfall. It's highly variable, so it can get down to sort of 300 mils across a 12 month period and, you know, up to probably 600 mils in a, in a really good year. The difference is stark. The 50s, 60s, 70s were relatively wet decades here and vegetation probably you know moved into into areas during during that time and we we've seen with the drying that some species are receding we've had a considerable amount of dieback in uh, in eucalypts which has been it's been really unfortunate the 80s were the beginning of a very dry period one of the things we've had to adjust to is a drying in the landscape and so systems that were set up in the, in the 50s, 60s, 70s don't match what we see now from a climate point of view. And so adapting your systems is, is really important. The tree planting is, is a good example of where with your best intentions you go out and you, you plant trees and things and then you get a big knock because you know the conditions are against you. It's a challenge. It, it's not an environment where you can go out annually and, and be assured of success, but you've just got to push on and um, you know, some will survive and you've got to go back and, and replant. And that's, that's just the reality of, of trying to establish trees in this environment. The property is really variable in terms of soils. So we range from almost pure sands right through to uh, deep black cracking clays. The, Vegetation sits atop of those, varies from you know, really good stands of native pasture through to uh, what I'd call more degraded annual pastures and then perennial pastures, introduced pasture species. And so again, it depends a bit on the areas, but in, in the areas like the Phalera subclover pastures, it's really important for us to understand our fertility there. So we do a lot of soil testing and then to match our fertilizer requirements to that. The native pasture areas, it largely sits around that seasonal spelling that we do and then you know only grazing them down to certain dry matter levels. We manage grazing I guess flexibly would be the the best uh, description. Depends a bit on time of the year. So for instance we would set stock use during a lambing period but once lambs are weaned and we have larger groups of animals available to us, we, we might crash graze areas or rotationally graze areas. Of course, the reality is that you have this highly variable climate here and despite your best intentions, you know, you don't always hit your targets. This year is a good example where we've had, we've had two very dry springs and for logistical reasons, it's been quite difficult in Tasmania to, to destock to the extent that you might wish, but on, on the whole, we're able to both get the productivity outcomes we want and the, and the sort of biodiversity environmental outcomes. Well, we've taken a number of initiatives. We've entered into some uh, environmental stewardship arrangements with the Midlands Conservation Partnership, and that's a partnership between Bush Heritage Australia and the Tasmanian Land Conservancy. So they've identified some really high value areas and come to some arrangements to to be paid annually for some outcomes. We've also been involved in some uh, tree planting projects along the Macquarie River with Greening Australia and that's quite a big project right across the catchment. 
but also some shelter belts around uh, some irrigated areas as well. So they're some of the key things, along with building a game-proof fence here to separate off our forested areas from introduced uh, pasture areas to reduce the both native and feral browsing animal impact. The property has got some significant areas of uh, native vegetation of differing types that are all relatively close together and of course scale brings resilience to native vegetation areas and so the catchment itself has quite a lot of remnant native vegetation and so there's the opportunity here to connect up your lowland grasslands, Themata and Poa grasslands, to the riparian zone through to the forested areas. Building that connectivity is probably why we can make some significant gains in biodiversity.